The presenting sponsor for On Education is Classcraft. We're excited to announce Classcraft's new story mode, which makes it easy for educators to harness the power of stories. Episodes 1 and 2 of Season 1 are ready for you and your students to play today, and it's completely free. To learn more about Classcraft and the new story mode, simply visit classcraft.com slash oneducation. Well, I just want you to know that everyone's talking about how amazing both of you are. Oh, thank you. And that this and podcast is awesome. It's like a morning talk show on the way into school. Hey. All right, we are joined on the podcast by Erin Rathke. She is the principal of Justice Page Middle School. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So uh, we're here at Impact Education Conference, and so is Justice Page. Yes. yes. And so are you. Yeah. And this is all very exciting. Um, we talked off air about um, the school itself. So um, actually, before we get started, tell us a little bit about you know who you are, your background, and, and that sort of stuff, and then we'll get into it. Yeah, Cindy asked me to write an intro. I was like, what do I say about myself? <laughs> so I have been in education for 20 years, and I am the principal of Justice Page Middle School. I did not start as a principal at Justice Page Middle School. I was the principal of Ramsey Middle School. Yeah. Uh, I've been in Minneapolis for 18 years, and I've been an educator. So I taught high school. I was a school improvement specialist. I was a teacher coach, assistant principal, and now principal in Minneapolis. So let's talk about the name change, because this is fascinating, and we talked a little bit about it um, before we got on air. Um, it was called, your school was called Ramsey Middle School. Yep. I assume named after someone named Ramsey, who yeah. is no longer alive. Correct. Uh, and now named after Justice Page, who is absolutely alive. Yep. Um, talk about, so you were the principal going through that process, and about the process being very much student-centered and student-led, which is fascinating. Yeah, so I was a first-year principal. And, oh, great. Oh, yeah, so it, it wow. really is a great story. I'm going to share it when I introduce Alan, but um, I, brand new principal, Ramsey Middle School. I think I'm doing this great thing. I'm, like, standing by the door, greeting all the students as they're coming in for their orientation, and they all have stickers on that say, rename Ramsey. And I was wow. like, what have I got? My, what is going on here? I, you know, you just, as a new principal, you have no idea. Sure. I, I was like, I have no clue what's happening here. Uh, but then I had some teachers who were working with students who were really saying Ramsey was was not representative of who they were. You know, he was known for genocide of Indians. And, oh, my um, God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they were just very much like, this is not who we are. This is not what we want our community to be about. So rename Ramsey seemed appropriate. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, good. So... I, I kind of was like, uh, I don't think this is the right timing. And some teachers had come to me and said, I think we could do this. And I said, uh, I just don't think that's what you do as a first year principal. Mm. I was like, uh, I hope I keep this job longer than, you know, six months. And uh, then my teachers, who are amazing and so smart, got to me in an instructional leadership team meeting and, and said, it's the time. We have the right students. We had great eighth graders who were amazing leaders. Our sixth graders were on board. Our sixth grade social studies kids were going through not only personal identity, but going through genocide. And so they were really passionate about it. And so they just got me right at the right time. And I was like, all right, we'll Let's do it. Do we'll do it. And it was all student led. Our students did such an amazing job. They engaged all of our stakeholders, whether it was a student body, our community members, they hosted school board members, wow. they hosted parents, people, alumni from Ramsey, which was Ramsey Junior High at one time. And, you know, we did have people who were concerned. They want sure. the the legend to be on or the, the tradition of what Ramsey was. And, you know, there's Ramsey County. So the, there was a board. lot yeah. of political heat or could have been a lot of political heat around it. And there were lots of names that came forward. They explored lots of names, but I'll tell you when one of our community members put forward justice page and it was like the fire and everybody just got really hot. Like this, this feels right. This is right. It was a representative who our students said they wanted to be. Did they nice. reach out the students then to justice page? Yeah, so I mean, how did that 
part come about? Yeah. Yes, you have to ask for permission. It's part of the process. So we called and asked them permission, and they agreed. But we had no relationship with him before. We never talked to him about it. It was he just said yes, and he never engaged with us. I mean, he's so humble and just such a class act. He just let it be. Said that they were open to it. Now that we have a relationship with him, of course, they were waiting that night as we were at the school board meeting, waiting for the resolution to come forward that we could rename the school. And so they were there listening. And the very next day, both him and Diane were on our front steps greeting our kids on Friday morning. It was amazing. Sprang into action. Totally. That's awesome. And I mean, there's legal things and and like there's you got to engage a lot. I think it's an interesting question about how many constituents have to be like on board to name rename a school and these kids that would have like engaged all of those people well we had no idea what the relationship would be we didn't you know you don't want to expect something from someone if that's Mm -hmm. not their plan i mean he was willing to let us use his name as a namesake and we weren't sure what was going to happen but uh diane uh you know, we've lost Dan- Diane about a year ago, and um, she just was the most amazing woman and a total go-getter. And once the school was renamed, she was there. I mean, I want to tell a story because um, she called me one day, and it was just right after the name change. It was in the middle of the summer. So I'm like, uh, you know, I'm a new principal. I've been there a year. You know, it's the first time I'm going to start the school year in between the second year. And she called me, and she's like, so I have this thing, like a a trophy or something that I don't know what to do with, you know, it just got dust on it. Do you want it? And I was like, sure, Diane, whatever (laughs) I, I, you know, sure. We'll take it. I'll figure out where to put it. Well, it was the gigantic plaque in Notre Dame stadium of him. And I was like, Diane, you might've wanted to say Notre Dame stadium. So it's hanging in our foyer. Now it's this beautiful gold plated, you know, Thing, picture of him from Notre Dame Stadium. I was like, that's Diane, amazing. that's a little bit more than just something you pulled out of your garage. <laughs> yeah, of but not. she, you know, they just have so much stuff, I think, that of just awards and things that, yeah. that were given to him. And they're just so humble. It just, we'll put it in the school. Sure, and so it hangs in our foyer now. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, we had no idea. They are there. They were there. Diane was there with him. Now is not after we've lost her, which was really hard on our community and our community celebrated and her life with him. They never had a public funeral. They they just came to Justice Page. And our community laid flowers out on the foyer or, or out of our front steps from our entire community coming. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, we had no idea, but they come on Friday mornings. They greet our students. He welcomes our student body at the beginning of every single year on the first Friday of the year. And I'm telling you, 850 middle schoolers, when he gets up, you could hear a pin drop. They love him. That's awesome. He autographs binders and shirts and forearms, and he's there. (laughs) Let the kids know him. And And what an example. So, I mean, we talk about... Um, you know, the Twitter people or the the YouTubers, the Jake Pauls of the world that these kids idolize yeah. um, that are like, there are a lot of YouTubers and streamers that I like and that I let my kids watch all the time. Um, but I mean, there's also some not so good ones. And like, if you're looking for a role model, someone that kids could look up to and idolize, this seems like the perfect choice. Yeah. What a, what a perfect well, situation. this last year, our art teacher wrote a grant for exterior murals. So we have four exterior murals that we just put up on the the side of our building, and they are four pictures of him and our students, mur- uh, self-portraits of our students. But there's a picture from him up from the Star Tribune. He's opening up his shirt the first year, the first assembly that he did, Justice Page Middle School. He's opening up his shirt. That's on the outside of our building. And I mean, I'm impacted every day when I walk in the doors and I see it and I know what our students did to even do the murals or to make this happen, the student voice that we had to generate the excitement to make this happen. But I had a one of our chief, our chief of academics research, Chief Eric Moore, come in and he was speaking to our student body and he leaned over to me at, during the assembly and he said, I just want you to know the impact I'm having to have an African-American man on your right. building. Can okay. you imagine what our students feel like? I mean, Alan Page is making an impact and he will make an impact long after he's not on this earth. Yes. Generations. It's on our building. It's not going, I said, it's not, it's going, not going anywhere for a hundred yeah. years. Yes. So full circle now in just a little bit. He, uh, Justice Alan Page, is going to actually step onto the stage here at Ties and and basically 
kick off the conference, mm-hmm. and you are going to have the opportunity of introducing them to us. I mean, what is that like? And I mean, well, I, this is the second or third time now that I've introduced him at a big event, and I it is I feel so privileged, and I have so much to say about him. He's one of my heroes. I didn't realize he would be such an important hero in my life, as well as Diane, his wife. Uh, just the impact that they've had on me around leading, education, being hum- or being humble. I mean, they're just amazing people. And so to be here and be able to tell, I'm using the, the if you've ever seen The Office where Jim and Pam are getting married and they take mental pictures, <laughs> that is my life with Alan Page. I yeah, just take mental I ima- pictures. I can imagine, it's surreal. I mean, he brought the Medal of Freedom to our building. He went to Washington and on the weekend got the Medal of Freedom. And on that Monday, he was in our building and he celebrated the Medal of Freedom with our students in our school. I mean, so I just mental pictures and I just keep thinking it can't get any better and it keeps getting better and better. So introducing him is a privilege. And I feel so honored to have a relationship with him and his family. His children are amazing. I feel like one of their kids, they always hug me and are like, we were talking about you at the dinner table. So I appreciate that. Wow. So here at the Ties Conference, you are actually just presented a session. And what was that about? And, and can yes. you share some details about that? Yeah. We are a social, our Minneapolis Public Schools is a, one of their priorities is social emotional learning. And so Justice Page Middle School has taken that on as one of our priorities and are very excited about that. We partner with CASEL, which is the Collaborative Association of Social Emotional Learning. We're the first learning lab school in the nation that's partnered with CASEL, uh, as long as a couple other schools in Minneapolis. And so my assistant principal, Casey Tverberg, and I were here presenting on some of the things that we've done in the school, whether it's around how we harness adult social emotional learning and the atmosphere and climate for our adult teachers. I think that is a group of people that get forgotten in education and we want to take really good care of our teachers because we want them to stay at Justice Page Middle School as well as the instruction we do with students and whether it's with our advisory or how we do it integrated in other academic areas but all of that harnessing a name change as a principal has changed how we can look at education in our school because it was an opportunity to reface our school, whether it was how it looked, uh, the marketing materials that we used, and it's all focused around our social emotional learning, our cult, climate and culture. And I love that you talk about the teacher's mental state because this is something that a lot of people ignore or sweep under the rug even. And it's uh, uh, we're good friends with Mandy Froelich, who talks about that all the time, and it's become a key part of what she talks about at conferences and stuff. And um, uh, I mean, I, I, even for me personally, I've publicly talked about dealing with imposter syndrome a lot, and especially as as people who uh, are more public and out there in front of other people. That actually has gotten worse for me over the last two years as the podcast has expanded and stuff like that. Um, it's important for teachers to think about um, where they are emotionally uh, because this affects how they teach their students, right? Right. I, you know, I was just on Facebook and it, it you know, every art, their article that comes out right now is about teacher shortage. Yeah. And so it is our responsibility as administrators and leaders in education that we're taking really good care of the people that are in front of our students. And I think they tend to be the forgotten group of people. We talk about four kids and I am four kids, mm. but I need to be four adults who are four kids. Yes. And if I don't do that, I won't have any teachers that are in front of our students. And social emotional learning is really important, but our, our as educators, if we can't model our own self-management and our own self-awareness and our own social awareness, then we we shouldn't be in front of kids asking them to do the same things that we're not able to do. So giving teachers the opportunity to explore their own social-emotional competencies is really important so that they're showing up being the best they can be for kids. So how do people connect with you? Are you on Twitter? Um, Talk about how people can connect with you and learn more about you and reach out to you if they're they're interested in learning sure, more. Sure, I am on Twitter, nice. Aaron Rathke six. So you can catch me on Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn, and which is where I spend a lot of time sharing what we're doing right. with with people around. Where we just did a bus driver training, so 
all of our all of the adults that interface with our kids need to be on the same page with us and so we just did it which is a big undertaking in Minneapolis public schools that's not a big that's not a small place so we had the bus drivers in um, on a morning after they dropped the kids off and spent time honoring them, thanking them for the work that they do, and then partnering with them so that we, our kids, the first adults that they see when they come to our school is those bus drivers. And it has to be a positive experience. Absolutely. And so doing all of that has been really important. So I share that stuff on LinkedIn and have had a lot of really positive really feedback about that. So Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to On Education. My name is Glenn Irvin. My co-host is Mike Washburn. On Education is part of the Education Podcast Network. You can listen to this show and many others by great educators like Jennifer Gonzalez, Matt Miller, and many more by visiting edupodcastnetwork.com. Want to get in touch with us? Check out our website at oneducationpodcast.com. You can tweet us at oneducationpod. Mike is at Mr. Washburn on Twitter, and I can be found at Irv Spanish. You can find us on Facebook by visiting facebook.com slash oneducationpod. We're also on Instagram at oneducationpod. If you're enjoying the show and think others would too, we would be thrilled if you shared it with them. Please leave us a rating or review in Apple Podcasts or the Google Play Store. When you leave a rating, it gives our rankings a boost. This helps others discover the show. We want to thank our presenting sponsor, Classcraft, for supporting us. Check out classcraft.com slash oneducation to learn more about them. Thanks as always for listening. Stay awesome and see you soon.